an insanely busy week for Call of Duty in general, but mostly because of all the information and all the things ramping up to the Blackout beta starting on Monday. However, we ended up getting a lot of stuff in the past week and a half that really is both games, Call of Duty World War II as well as Black Ops 4. And while of course the former of those two wasn't really in the limelight per se for this week because they didn't have a bunch of things being debuted for the upcoming event, it is something that there was still some things in the backdrop for World War II. So while we've been talking about Black Ops 4, all week practically, we're going to take a quick brief moment today to cover what was Sledgehammer's community update for World War II as of yesterday. So they talked a little bit about some things coming up, some things to look forward to and all that kind of stuff. And it's actually a lot smaller than many people may have anticipated, especially because if you remember back a couple of weeks ago, we ended up seeing that they held off a little bit for one. Then we saw a slight update saying we'll have a bigger update coming September 7th. And then as of yesterday, September 7th, it wasn't all that big. So while we're going to be breaking down everything here at this, it might not be as big as what you may anticipate here for what normally is the community updates. And it wasn't even something that was posted on their blog. It was just a mini Reddit thread. So unfortunately, not as in depth as again, I was hoping and maybe you were, but still, regardless, we'll talk about it here and break it down for you. That said, the biggest part out of this, we'll start with that, is that they talked about the Covert Storm update as of the 4th earlier in the week. That being something that brought the Covert Storm events up to being live, and with that, we ended up getting a bunch of different things. We ended up getting new weapons. The AS-44 was already a part of the Commander Division, but we got more variants with that one. We ended up seeing we had the brand new weapons of the Proto X-1 and the VMG-1927. We ended up seeing that we had new content in terms of weapon charms, camos, calling cards, all that good stuff, plus new uniforms, always cool. You can customize your commander division loadout now with that. We ended up seeing that we also got some new ranked play stuff with some rewards there for chaining together three wins and then five wins respectively for a calling card and a free low weapon charm. Then we also saw that the community challenge itself was made public as well, which again, kind of bummed out about this because with the lack of posting on either the blog or on Reddit a little bit about some updates with this stuff, unless you saw that update or you see the news tab, you might not even even know what the community challenge is. We need to call in 310 million score streaks by the end of the event. And for people like me, where my news tab is glitched out and I haven't seen any event updates since Attack of the Undead, again, if I didn't see that Reddit post, I wouldn't really even know what the community challenge was to take part in it. But regardless, Covert Storm was added in and we got all that kind of stuff added into the mix. And they also detailed a little bit of the changes that came along with that, where they fixed out the Commander Division glitching out, but also a little exploit with score streaks as well. So the fix itself was for the prestige rewards with Commander Division, and I know a lot of you guys came into the comments and talked about this, and it was something that, honestly, I didn't really have any answer for it because I had no idea what was going on at the time, but the prestige division rewards were essentially not being granted to players that would prestige up to second, third, and fourth prestige for the Commander Division, but that is something that should be fixed now. Hopefully, if you guys are prestiging, you should now have those options to get those items as your rewards for prestiging. Also, they ended up fixing the exploit with the score streaks, where, again, I didn't know much about this one, but it was something that was patched up. I saw some footage of it. Personally, I don't really look too deep into glitches. I'm not a big fan of using them or anything like that, so therefore I don't really associate myself with having to know much about them. One thing that was also apparent that I don't know if it was fixed, but was there at the very beginning of the Covert Storm event, was that there were a bunch of very easy to use out of map exploits within Egypt. I know that I was just playing a regular casual game and infected, and I saw this guy on my minimap outside of the perimeters, and I'm like, wait, what? And I went over to look at it, and I just went to go and look to see where he was, and just by simply moving to the barrier, I even entered into it. So it was that easy where you literally just walked up to it and you could get out of the map. So hopefully that's been fixed up. I'm not gonna put any footage up on screen of it now just because I don't really, again, condone that sort of stuff, so I don't wanna feed into it. But Sledge, if you're watching, I got some footage I can send over your way if you want. <laughs> but fixes and updates out of the way in terms of actual content that came out. The rest of this update really just focuses on some smaller things that we can look forward to in the upcoming week. The first of which being the Weekend Warfare, which is going on right now if you guys haven't hopped on and taken advantage of this. We end up having double XP on Gridiron and double weapon XP in Capture the flag. So kind of an off the wall type of thing to me, but it makes sense because they're trying to get the population of these up a little bit. I personally couldn't tell you the last time that I went and played Gridiron or Capture the Flag. So to incentivize some people to play that, I'm totally cool with that. Double XP on Gridiron is going to be a good one as well. Weapon XP though, it might not be my biggest cup of tea that I go for every single time. If you guys need to rank up your new weapons, that being the Proto X1, the VMG 1927, or if you need to do the AS44 still, you can end up doing those, get some attachments here for that and build some awesome 
some class setups as a result, but it's gonna be easy to do within Capture the Flag and Double Weapon XP. Additionally, going on this weekend, for anybody that's interested in playing on PC, it's a PC free weekend happening until Sunday tomorrow at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, I'm assuming. So if you guys wanna jump on Steam, you can end up playing for the next 12 to 16 hours or so, depending on when this video goes live and whenever you end up actually catching it, then you can end up playing on the PC for free. While it might not be the most optimized game on PC and it doesn't have as much attention as, say, Black Ops 4 will for the PC version of it, it's still a lot of fun to play. I remember going out to Raven playing it on PC for their little early capture event there almost a year ago at this point. Plus, I played a little of the PC beta back in the day and also I think the last PC free weekend I did that as well. But if you guys are looking to just test out some maybe, say, mouse and keyboard skill or play it in a different way, this is a great opportunity to do so and it doesn't come around all that much. So if you guys want to jump on Steam, download it and test it out for the next couple of hours, be my guest. Of course, it is going to be there for free for you to do. So that said, moving along though into the update, the next thing that was mentioned was the community challenge status, which again is to call in 310 million score streaks by the end of the event, that being the 25th. And so therefore we're getting close to tier one here at this one. And at least as of making this video, as of commentating, it wasn't available and completed at the time of this. But by the time this goes live, it might be complete and we might have that tier one of the calling card. Now, if I'm off the mark here with this one, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below just how close we are, because again, my status on the news page is glitched. I haven't seen any of the community updates for the community challenges as of the last couple of events. So I may be off the mark here at this one, but feel free to let me know just how close we are. Keep me posted on the status, but still regardless, we'll be getting that calling card very soon. And then after that, we'll move on to the weapon charm, then the camo, then the special helmet. And of course the final fifth tier of the Waffenschmiede 2, Waff 28, as the overall reward for the community challenge. Looking forward to almost all of these. I'm a fan of pretty much every piece of this, though I might not use the smaller things like the calling card. Definitely looking forward to the new camo, the new helmet, and the weapon variant as well out of this once we progress a little further. Little pro tip, if you also want to contribute a ton to the community challenge, run ordnance as well as Molotovs, Recon, and Counter Recon. And on a regular basis, you'll be able to call in, say, maybe 10 to a dozen score streaks on average per each match that you end up playing. So it'll definitely speed up the process if we go with a lower stuff. But that said, you also have alternatives like Leprechaun Hunt and everything like that. Outside of that, the only thing that was debuted after this was a little bit of the midweek mobilization and weekend warfare for next week. So next week's midweek mobilization will be double division XP and double XP when you party up in S and D. So seems like double division XP across the board. And then if you party up and you want that extra little surplus of double XP for your soldier, partying up in search and destroy will grant that to you. So that'll be for Wednesday going into Thursday. So that 24 hour period. And then the next weekend warfare, is going to be double XP in domination and double XP in dogfighting. Now, I'm excited for both of those because both modes are relatively fun to play. Domination for a little more grindy and sweaty if you want to rank up a little bit, but dogfighting is a lot of fun to play around with and it gives you a little more reason to come back to it. I think that dogfighting is one of the cooler things that was added into World War II in terms of game modes and especially when you think about it from a developmental perspective where those maps and those functionalities for that were made almost specifically for that game mode in particular. Husky was the starting point, sure, but but whenever you take a look, those maps were made specifically just for that game mode. So it's a lot of fun to come back to, and I think the novelty of it is a lot of fun to play around with as well. But outside of that, we don't really have much. We didn't even get detailed the next weekly weapon contract. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say it's the three line sniper, simply because we've already seen us move into the days of summer weapons. The automaton is what we had this week. And then of course, we also had before that the Ribby rolls. So the only one next up on the deck out of those weapons is the three line. Then we might move into the covert storm weapons or maybe move back in time a little bit for some things to kind of recap in those. But we don't have that specifically detailed to us like we normally would. So that's something we're still relatively in the dark on, but maybe keep your eyes open for. That said, that is the update that we were given. That's all that we had on the table here for this. But the one thing that I will say is that I'm a little bummed in two different places. One, because we haven't heard anything about new modes detailed at all or anything returning to World War II that may be a limited time only thing, nothing detailed with all of that. So it seems like there might not be as much to this event as we normally see, which is kind of a bummer because I was really hoping for some things like throwback or maybe demolition, maybe one shot. Any of the modes that were just limited time would be a lot of fun to play around with and give some more, again, not necessarily novelty, but more intrigue to bring to the event in terms of other things to play around with other than just say, getting new weapons. But the other part that I'm kind of bummed about is because they said that this would be a bigger update. They said to look out for a bigger weekly update in reaction to all the new content dropping in the coming weeks after Labor Day on Friday, September 7th. But yet what we got was pretty small. 
What reasoning, I'm not entirely sure why it wasn't a bigger update, something that even made it onto their blog. I have no idea, but I think for me, I'm a little upset with it and a little sad because I'm not personally expecting many more updates in the coming weeks. As we ramp up towards the launch of Black Ops 4, we probably won't be getting as much content as we normally would for a game in its primary life cycle. That being especially after Black Ops 4 launches, but even as we ramp up towards it, it's kind of shifting the focus from World War II to Black Ops 4 as that mainstream title for the Call of Duty franchise. So to me, it's not really the content covered, but more so going out with a bang and rather maybe a missed opportunity to do so. So maybe I'm completely wrong, maybe we'll have something absolutely massive here in the upcoming weeks, but as we jump into after the blackout beta week, not this coming Monday, but the following Monday after that, it's about a two to three week period of where we're not really going to have all that much. Covert Storm will still be going on, sure, but outside of that, the next thing we have is the big launch of Black Ops 4, to which I don't know if we'll see another event before that in World War II or any real update for that, but it just kind of seems like we're going quietly into that good night, which is always a kind of sad bummer to me that we're shifting over, and especially because while it might not be everybody's favorite cup of tea, I really did enjoy World War II. I love the transparency and the precedent that Sledgehammer has set for communication and transparency and updates with the game that going into Black Ops 4, maybe it even makes this upcoming year the best in terms of transparency and updates for giving content on a regular basis, but I think that this was a nice precedent set, so in that sense, that's why I'm kind of bummed out we didn't get a big update in a sense, and I might not be on the same viewpoint as everybody else that wanted something bigger, but that's kind of my reasoning. But that said, that's the update that we are given, that's my little take on it as well, but that said, I'd love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. Were you guys hoping for a bigger update? Are you guys happy with what we had so far? Are you guys enjoying Covert Storm? Are you guys looking forward to Black Ops 4's Blackout Beta next week? Whatever it is, feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. But that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Call of Duty, World War II, and Black Ops 4 content. We'll keep you covered on a daily basis with anything you may need to know. So if any of that interests you, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. If you guys want to follow me over on Twitter as well, it's the best place to get connected with me outside of YouTube. Practically live on Twitter. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. Also, if you guys want to follow me over on Instagram, a little more active over there as well, so that link is down there for you guys to check out also. That said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care, and peace.